speak. Obviously, uh, referring to the state we are in, uh, being in samsara. And so we are not, cling, we must not cling on to samsara. This follows on from yesterday that I mentioned that um, we are clinging on to or latching on to our samsaric delights um, we, because of the desire that we have and also the emotion uh, that we have in our mind. And as a result of which, we cling on to this life in existence. And this is the extreme view, if you like, uh, without understanding the emptiness part of it. And obviously, that is pure uh, ignorance and delusion. So here we are, the initial verse, comprehend a great path and develop supreme aspirations. So what is this supreme aspiration that um, this verse referred to? Obviously the supreme aspiration is that of the Bodhisattva path into uh, Buddhahood. So that's the uh, supreme aspiration to attain the supreme enlightenment delve deeply into the Sutra treasury to complete understand all Dharma. So understand all Dharma uh, is a part that we enter all the Dharma doors, right? So we have here the supreme aspiration. Uh, what is it that they hold on to us so that we have the supreme aspiration? It's the Bodhisattva vow, okay? The fourth of the Bodhisattva vow and that of attaining supreme enlightenment. And complete understand all Dharma is the third of the four Bodhisattva valve, is to enter all the Dharma doors. So if you, these two lines refer to two out of the four Bodhisattva valve, obviously the first being up into deliver sending beings, you know, two is for us to uproot our your passion and that is part of our practice. So opening all provision, provisional to reveal the truth. And obviously you all understand uh, this line, all written to the ultimate, which essentially I'm uh, taking on the uh, teachings of the Dharma, the ultimate to return to the ultimate being the supreme enlightenment. So retain and uphold the virtuous Dharma on the true path of Bodhisattva. So this, retain the true path of Bodhisattva, this refers to um, the first two vows uh, of the four Bodhisattva vows. Um, then of uh, helping to deliver all sentient beings, that's why we walk amongst the masses. And the two is for us to purify ourselves um, so that we can uproot all of our transgression and afflictions. So in Master's explanation, as Buddhist practitioners, when we first take refuge in the Buddha in order to comprehend the great path, so then um, I'm, I'm sure all of you all uh, have recited the uh, refuge prayer. We take the refuge in a triple gem, the Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha. So I must explain that taking refuge means turning from darkness to light. So we do so from darkness to light, meaning we, from ignorance to knowing, from knowing to, realize, to realization and to enlightenment. So, um, it's like walking from a dark room into light. So this taking the refuge. So this in the metaphor of this chapter um, three uh, of the burning house, it's like we are cooked up in this house of darkness and we need to get out of the door when the father is waiting in the case, the Buddha. So it's turning when you take the refuge uh, on the Buddha, we walk out from that darkness to light. But the metaphor of darkness to light, um, we also need to understand um, the existence of this darkness. Actually, darkness does not exist. If you think about it, darkness is simply an absence of light. And I've, I've shared and explained to you this before. So, if you do this, and I'm sure you know the answer, that if the room is dark, that's because there's no light. So just to reinforce the, my point, if the room is lighted, 
you cannot bring down a sin to the room, right? Because when it's slighted, the darkness disappears. And um, so therefore, if we understand that, uh, this darkness that referring to the uh, encrustation and obscuration of our mind in darkness, just because we are covered by all these afflictions and our past karmic seeds. So therefore, if we understand the raging uh, skandhas um, in the Heart Sutra, it's emptiness. So therefore, this emptiness doesn't exist. It doesn't have a self. Phenomena doesn't have a self. So that's why this, um, you see darkness to light. So when we understand the way we are, this, where some sorrow is, and darkness we are in, um, we're afflicted to attachment. We're actually attached to nothing. We're only attaching to darkness, but darkness doesn't exist. So therefore, if you understand the lines of the truth, then we walk up to that, and darkness will no, will no longer be there. And the problem is because we do not know we are in darkness because we've been living in darkness a lifetime after lifetime. So now that we're seeing the light, then we walk towards the light and we then realize what we have been doing. We have then realized what is our conduct. So that's the reason why um, I always say that we, do, we need to do a lot of self-reflection. When we do self-reflection, we are actually bringing light to insight us into our inner being. If our inner being is in darkness, we do not know what we are doing. So um, I can go on and on about this line, but let me move on. Having taken refuge, we must eliminate this darkness completely. So we have taken this refuge in the Buddha. That means we embrace the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha. So we embrace the Buddha, then we end the teachings. So obviously, we, now that we know this, what teachings are, is to get us out of that room of darkness. So we need to eliminate that, to bring that light to within ourselves. So when we face the light, we should move forward in, with wholesome deeds. So when we move forward with wholesome deeds, why do, do we need to move forward with wholesome deeds? Because when we move forward with wholesome deeds, we are coming out from what we have been doing wrong from unwholesome to wholesome. And this unwholesome to wholesome is a correction of our habitual tendencies, correction of our conduct, correction of our character uh, to do that. Because when we do, we are bringing light to within us. When we bring that light to within us, then we realize what we have been doing wrong. And this is why um, we need to, to uh, to move forward with wholesome deeds. This is comprehending the great path. Since we clearly see this path, we must form great aspiration. So even though have we change our conduct and our character, that's not the end of it. But that will give us some light to within us. So when we give some light to within us, we need to then move on to bring greater light to within us. The only way to can bring the greater light to within us in this great vehicle is to make the bright light brighter with others. So when we walk amongst the masses, what are we doing? We're sharing the light with others. When we share the light with others, the, the greater uh, will be the light. So the greater will be light, and we go down into more and more finer and subtle afflictions that we have, but we cannot see. And that will enable us to change ourselves to precision, to a precision practice. So when we listen to Dharma, we must take to heart to have the mind's desire. Now, what is this mind's desire? This is by following our state of mind. It is to become a seeker. So a mind must be have the desire to seek for the truth. But if the mind look at it and say, oh, this is what I know, I'm satisfied with it, we won't be able to go forward. So this growth of learning must always be there. So we are open to the provisional and reveal the truth and all return to the ultimate supreme truth, which is the non-dual truth. So this non-dual truth, that's non-dual truth, that's, that's, uh, and that's what, our, what we are living right now. 
and uh, we are living in a world where we win gain and loss, happiness and sadness, praise and blame. Um, and so all this really wins the blow on us. Um, and we will be either, like my must always say, the, the extreme view, either graduating towards the extremism or internalism or nihilism. So, but we walk the middle way. What, what is this middle way we are, we are referring to? And because in the middle way, they are not influenced by the non the duality of things. So you are in a level, you're walking a path of equanimity. You're not attached to near, or are you averse to the far? And there's only one true principle that is the truth. And but the thing is, the principles are very profound because we are living in this world like there are people, matters, and objects, and all this pose difficulty for us because we have a lot of divisions within us. We've got a lot of boundaries within us because every line of boundary that we have, and because there's a way being brought up. And that has been so for innumerable lifetimes. So we got to slowly remove all these boundaries. Each boundary we remove, we actually going towards non-duality. And that is the ultimate truth. So only one path leads to the source, but it's one ultimate reality, which is the, the truth and one only single truth. And when that truth is revealed to us, um, it will open all the Dharma doors. So we must retain and uphold the virtuous dharma. There are many teachings where we must internalize so that when we need to apply these lessons. And so these are the lessons we have to apply uh, to our daily life so that we can grow in wisdom life. So the house is burning. We live only as long as we breathe. Okay. Our life started with the first breath. So the, obviously um, the fetus developed um, in the mother's womb, and uh, and that breath uh, is taken from the mother. But our own breath is taken. The first, the man, the first child, when the child is first born, he looked, he grabs for air, and that's when the um, life in the worldly life uh, begins. But before that, nine months in the mother's womb uh, is a life within the mother. So obviously. Um, we, we can talk a lot about that, whether the consciousness happens in the first month, second month, or third month, and so on and so forth. But the thing is, that's also a uh, so bit of digression right now. That's why in the Chinese uh, philosophy, we count the age of our life a year before. And that's when it's in the mother's womb. But in the early life, um, it is when we take the first breath. So in the same thing, when one dies, when the elements start breaking down, when four elements start breaking down one by one, the last one is the air element, and that's the breath. So life is indeed impermanent. Additionally, we suffer from aging, illness, and death. We also, this, these are the eight suffering, suffering from people, meeting people we hate, not getting what we want, parting with those we love, and the raging fire aggregates. These are the eight sufferings um, that we deal with. That, but when we walk, when we realize the non-duality, we are no longer afflicted by this. Obviously, it's easy to say. Um, and before we can do that, we, that we, we must first understand and realize what the life is. Only then we will be able to understand this well and be able to walk up with clarity. So that's the reason why purity of heart and clarity of the mind is important for when we walk this path. So we must enjoy life in this world. And because why better enjoy this life in this world? Because our life come with a set of karmic blueprints and a set of karmic blueprints will result in the unfoldment of our own karma of the past. So when this happens we are in this, this samsaric world, which means the truth of suffering, so we got to enjoy that. But enjoying that to practice. So as much as we walk out, from darkness where we understand the light, we have to still group a way, way out. So our, our guidance from that is the light within us. But if you cannot bring the light to within us, we do not even realize what we are doing. So the Buddha spoke of the evil world of high turbidities, a time when major and minor calamities uh, would arise. So, and uh, Master said we are in the midst of this um, 
uh, turbidities, okay? We're in the midst of this calamity. But look, right, even at the moment right now, a global pandemic, it is one of the three minor calamities, which is pestilence. So this pandemic that we are in right now, we are in the midst of this thing. But as someone who is in practice, then we've got to sit and observe the world so that we can must also learn from this pandemic. So for the Buddha, we see talking about the present era. Right now, all microcosm of this world, there are disasters everywhere. And, and uh, um, we, we can hear the raging uh, fire in the US and then um, in, in the summertime, it'll be in Australia. All these things are happen, happening. And you hear of famine too and earthquakes and so on and so forth. In addition, we experience the climate as a microcosm, which is microcosm referring to our own life. So, which is the four states, it could be uh, aging, it could be um, illness, and obviously ultimately uh, the death in the body. We cannot run away uh, from this. So when all these elements are happening in, in the world and obviously resulted in major and minor calamities, there's also within us in a, at a microcosm level, uh, we have to go through all these stages. So at the end of the day, um, what's happening is that we are in this, so we've got to realize that we are in this burning house, which will eventually scorch us. So what we need to do is to slowly reduce the flame and walk down. So we walk up, run away from the flame of samsara. So it's the metaphor of our existence in the desire realm. That is why you call a burning desire. So the lessons learned. We linger in the desire realm or the samsaric delights, uh, which I said yesterday. If, on, and if, if we do not let our desires go, we will remain in the desire and be harmed because we're clinging on. So it's like clinging on to in darkness, clinging on to, to, to the uh, burning house. Not only will we experience physical hardships in the desire realm, our wisdom life will also be harmed by our desires. And it has to be because. If, if the desire is clinging to that, we're still in darkness, how can we have a wisdom line? So that's the reason why I, I, I shared with you in the past, and masters, uh, I've also been mentioning this, is to cultivate the virtue. The virtues, um, and, and, and master always emphasize the uh, great love, that great loving heart. Um, that great loving heart, the moment we expand that heart, we are removing, we are removing our own, boundaries from seeing others. Because once you open it up, uh, it will manifest uh, to great love and on great love, that's the one that opens up our mind. So to do this, we must uphold the precepts. So uphold the precepts for that we do not fall back into our evil ways um, from what we have been doing. See? So if we still have strong desires and linger in this place, the fires burn hot by the day, increasing the disaster in this world, the world more serious and people will experience more and more suffering. You know, I'm, I'm not sure whether you heard about this theory of the boiling frog. You know, if <clears throat> you put a frog and it on this expand, you put a frog in hot water, you know what the frog does? The frog will just jump out from the pot. But you put a frog into a, uh, water and slowly heat it up. The frog will enjoy it and slowly because you feel the warm and it won't jump up and it will cook inside the pot. Okay, and this is what um, with a metaphor of what we are because we beginning enjoy, right? We enjoy the warm, we enjoy the samsaric delight, we are enjoying the attachment, we're enjoying the pleasures, but without knowing that we're being burned uh, as a result. That we oh. must behave accordingly so we can prevent ourselves from committing wrongs and be able to purify, uh, to purif uh, bring purity to other people as we purify ourselves. So in contemplation, this is in relation to um, how we deal with others and how we see others. Uh, because when we have these boundaries all within us, uh, this is what we will blend up being. Whatever you dislike and disdain about others is about you. Very often we talk about others and we can, it's very easy for us to do that. That all this thing that we're talking about is actually about ourselves. When these differences dissolve, you then see the good in others.
as just as much as you see the good in you. So this is the, the differences are the boundaries we set, right? So when we remove that and we see the good in others, which is what how to cultivate, how we bring forward the great love uh, within our hearts. There's nothing for you to see, not in others and not in yourself. There's no place for differences in the practice. And this is why then we expand our heart as fast as in the universe. Differences are just fuel in the flame of desire and emotion that burn you throughout one's life. So you think of it logically. It must be because anything, when you have that boundary and you, you, when there's a boundary within us, we judge, we see the differences and that they say, we, within the boundary is ours. We desire that, we're happy with that. That's our emotion. But outside the boundary, it upset us. So you cultivate virtue from similar, some similarities. So that's what we do. We find, we do not look at differences, we look at similarities. So you gain wisdom from the similarities. You see in the differences of others, there are differences yet you see, sim okay, there must be similarities. And this is what the wisdom uh, is about. So we see the similarities in the differences of others. So on relationship, change your character to cultivate the power. Right, which some master have been trying to say, and even for, for today, and it's what it is to bring light within us so that we can change with the spiritual consciousness to be merciful in our ways. So that one be merciful because it's from the merciful part, merciful virtue that we can bring the great love. Because being, being merciful, we can, there will always be a boundary and a division and a differences so that you do not hold any grudges with anyone who upsets you in any way. And that's what we want to be, to be forgiving. It takes many lifetime to reach where you are, but it just takes a matchstick to burn a forest, as Master always say. Okay, Kanan, brothers and sisters, thank you. Kanan, Kanan to our brother Chin, our great brother Chin for another one marvelous uh, summary and marvelous insight yeah kind of so much <laughs>